what's up? It's been a couple weeks. Um, title of the video really says it all, and uh, and it's the real deal. I found out recently that I have cancer, which is a pretty heavy thing to say because, you know, before I got cancer, I didn't even know I could get cancer, you know? And for people like me, people in my age group, I think that we normally think of cancer as this thing that's really distant to us, you know? We think of cancer as this thing that only affects older people or maybe people in other parts of the world that don't have access to clean water, good food, resources, safety, that kind of thing. And, um, and if there's one thing that I've learned over the past couple of weeks is that it can be you, you know? And the only way to get ahead of these kinds of things is to know that they can happen. And so if I had had, you know, a better understanding of, you know, what to look out for and knowing that this was even possible, then I could have done a better job at getting ahead of this. But, um, you know, it is what it is. And so I'm really hoping that this video will get to someone that needs to hear it. And, you know, if, uh, if it helps out one person, then, uh, then I'm cool with that. So, yeah, so it, it, uh, it turns out that I have testicular cancer which is, uh, again, you know, wasn't on my radar. I had no idea that this was even possible, but that's what we're dealing with. And testicular cancer is a pretty rare form of cancer, all things considered. Obviously, it only affects men, um, and it only affects about 1% of men in the U.S. There's about 10,000 cases or less, I believe, a year, which is pretty insane. I mean, that's a really low number, right? And so... It kind of makes sense why there isn't really a lot of conversation around this kind of thing is because it's it's so rare but you know it's important to know what to look out for because you know it can be you and if it's not you it might be your brother it might be your uncle it might be your cousin it might be your friend and so it's important to be on the lookout for these kinds of things and so for me um, i had had symptoms for a couple of months before actually getting checked out but again i still had no idea that it could be cancer uh, I'd had a lump in my testicle for you know about six months maybe six seven months before I actually got it looked at it started out as a hard spot kind of in the corner on the lower section coming up uh, sometimes people can have that same you know hard spot on the side and then it starts to spread um, sometimes you know people get um, kind of like cysts which are not tumors they're they're full of fluid or sometimes they're even just empty and they start at the top and so I figured out that that wasn't me and so that it couldn't be that kind of thing a cyst is you know it, it grows in the area where fluid gets you know transported which is closer to the top and so I was able to eliminate that as a possibility um, for me um, there were actually no other symptoms besides that. Some people report back pain. Some people report, you know, a sensitivity down there to the touch. Um, but in general, most people have no pain associated with it. And so it really makes sense how this stuff can just get pushed to the side because it doesn't hurt. Nothing hurts. You feel great. It's like this thing that you have down there. And, you know, unless you're actively looking for these things, it's really easy to see how this stuff can get just get brushed off or ignored. And so that's when you really are in trouble is when this stuff starts to spread. So at about the six month mark, I decided to go to the doctor to have him look at it. I went to see my PCP. I know all the lingo now. So my, my primary care physician is just like your general doctor. And he looked at it and he was like, all right, this is something that you should actually get checked out. So I had a follow-up meeting with my my specialist who you know I was referred to he's a urologist he specializes in you know this type of thing and you know we did a bunch of testing in December so in December I man there was gosh so much testing I mean so many doctor's visits in you know the span of one week I had been to the doctor at that point more times in that week than I'd ever been in my entire life and um you know, we did blood tests, we did a bunch of different scans, a bunch of imaging. Um, you know, in the blood work, they test for these things called tumor markers, which are these hormones in your blood that are secreted anytime you have a tumor growing inside of you, which is, you know, what I was dealing with. And so um, they do that. I did an ultrasound to get an image of the, of the tumor and to see, you know, what it looks like. You can see a tumor on those types of scans. I did a CAT scan to see if it had spread 
and within a week I was on the table you know for surgery and I had this thing done called an orchiectomy where they actually remove your testicle um, you know pretty crazy and they don't do it the way that you think that they do it um, they actually they have I have like this six inch incision and it's actually higher on my waist it's it's right below my belt line and they do it that way to get as much tissue behind it as possible so they kind of pull it up and out of you and so they do this thing called the biopsy and in the biopsy they examine the mass to see what type of cancer it is and how far it's spread and so for me uh, you know there's basically two types um, there's a seminoma and then there's a non seminoma and seminoma is like really easy to treat it's usually um, more receptive to chemotherapy and radiation and that kind of thing and then there's non seminoma which can be more aggressive more stubborn and so that's the category I'm in and in my biopsy they figured out that it had started to spread into my lymphovascular channel which is you know this like channel that leads into your lymph nodes and so that's how cancer spreads it uses your lymph nodes and if you don't know what your lymph nodes are there are these points in your body they're all over and they create this network that is your lymphatic system and that's how your body fights off disease and stuff and ironically that's how cancer gets around is it uses your lymphatic system to spread and stage one is you know means that you're it's contained to the testicles. Stage two would mean that it's kind of started to spread into your abdomen area. Three would be your lungs, I'm pretty sure. And then four is your brain. And, you know, if you're not looking for these things, man, you can get really far into your staging before you even have any idea. And so that's why it's so important to get ahead of these things. So um, it turns out I'm a stage 1B patient, which means that I'm right in between stage 1 and 2 because we know that it's started to spread, but we don't know how far. And so next steps for me are, you know, uh, surgery, um, chemo, and that kind of thing. And so there's pros and cons to both, and I won't go over them in this video, but, um, you know, it's a, it's a pretty tricky thing. And so the last few weeks for me have been uh, pretty crazy, you know, I mean, and not in the way that you would think, I feel like a bullet, you know, I'm strong, I'm healthy, you know, I can exercise, I can run, I can jump, I can think, the mental thing has been the more challenging thing, you know, I, I feel like I'm in a dream, and every morning I wake up, and then I'm, I'm like, I do this, it's really weird, I, I wake up every morning, seriously, and, and I look over at my desk, and I'm just, and I'm like hoping that the stack of medical bills will be gone, you know, it's, um, it's just stuff like this and it's, and I'm hoping that like, I'll just wake up and they'll be gone and that this will just be like something I like don't have to think about. Um, but that's not the case. And so I think the more challenging thing about this whole cancer thing has really been navigating the healthcare system. And I now have a pretty good idea of what everyone is talking about when they say that the healthcare system in the U.S. is broken. But, you know, we won't get into that. Um, so what I'm doing now is I'm, I'm doing my part, you know, every single day. I mean, I'm spending all day, every day. You have no idea, you know, just investing as much time as possible into getting educated and uh, learning as much as I can about the disease, about treatment options, what are the pros and cons, how they're going to affect the rest of my life, um, you know, what I have to look out for, like what the scheduling looks like, like, you know, what are the red flags, how do I beat this thing? Um, and what I've learned is that a lot of people don't ask these questions. There's a lot of people that deal with this kind of thing and are just along for the ride and they talk to one doctor and then they think that that's the end-all be-all. You know, I've talked to a couple different oncologists at this point um, talking to a surgeon next week and everybody has a different opinion and so you know if you're further along on your journey I would encourage you to please gather as much opinions as possible because you're gonna talk to one doctor and he's gonna tell you one thing and then you're gonna talk to a second one and he's gonna say the exact opposite which is the craziest thing you know because everyone is entitled to their opinion and I don't think anyone is wrong you know I think everyone is right and in what they think I just think that their approach is a little bit different and so that's a really interesting thing to kind of compare and contrast as well so yeah I mean that's kind of where we're at um, so um, yeah 
I think that's uh, that's kind of where we're at. So what to expect? Um, I don't know. Yeah, you know, that's kind of the update. So uh, I'm definitely still going through it. I mean, there's a long road ahead and like surveillance for me over the next couple of years is a really crucial part to beating this thing. Um, but on the upside, the good news is that testicular cancer is actually a very treatable form of cancer. It's, it's actually, if you're going to get cancer, they say that you should get testicular cancer because it, uh, it has a really high survival rate. And, you know, the statistic, the survival rate statistic is only based on the first five years, but it, you can be cured from testicular cancer. You know, I think it's like in the 95, 96, 97% of people you know, live past the first five years, which is, I know that's not saying much, but what that means is that it's, it's a very curable type of cancer if you do your part to get ahead of it and to treat it quickly and effectively. And so, yeah, um, sorry this video kind of um, went a little bit over the time that I wanted it to, but there's a lot to go over and there's so much to talk about. Any one of these topics can be a whole extra video. Um, but uh, I'm glad I made this video at this point because if I had, um, I think if I'd tried to, well, I, I did try to film this video a few weeks ago and I definitely wasn't nearly as well put together or informed on the topic. And so I'm at a good place. I feel, you know, I feel pretty good about like what's going on. I, I feel like I can kind of understand the situation and I don't feel like I'm just along for the ride. So uh, that's the update. Um, Again, if you know someone that needs to hear this, please share it with them. If it's you, then do yourself a favor. Go get checked out. And uh, yeah, so talk soon.